Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, so I just finished up this build and I'm about to put the strings on. Um, this one's going out to a, a beginner, so I thought this would be a really good chance to show uh, how I do it. And of course, uh, like a lot of things, there are a load of different methods for putting strings on uh, out there. Um, everybody has their own preference, um, but this one has always made the most sense to me in terms of the physics, the mechanics, um, and the performance of the instrument. So I'll go through and I'll explain uh, the reason uh, for why I like you know, this method at each step along the way. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at some of the things you're gonna need or a few things that uh, you might wanna use to help you do a nice clean job of it. Um, first of all, of course, you're gonna need your strings. Um, you're gonna need either a small screwdriver or even better, um, a paintbrush maybe, or a, a pen. Basically something that's long, narrow, uh, rigid, and I like the paintbrush better than the screwdriver because you want something that doesn't have any kind of a sharp edge. Um, and a paintbrush has a nice smooth surface and nice rounded tip, so no chance of scratching anything on your guitar. Um, if you're finicky like me, you might want to have some low-tack tape or you could take some regular tape and just detack it so it's not so sticky. Um, you can use a good old-fashioned pair of wire cutters, wire snippers, or you can use one of these fancy schmancy uh, string cutters with the winder on the other side. You can find these at your local shop or any of the guitar sites online. Um, and all the way down to a utility knife or just simply even a razor blade will be fine. And finally, uh, a pencil with the tip shaved down to expose some lead there at the tip. Okay. So you can see on this model, I'm using a hardtail bridge. And uh, with this hardtail bridge, you can mount the strings through the back plate of the bridge, or you can go directly straight through the body, through the back. So today I'm gonna go through the back of the instrument. Um, I have my own preference for doing that. If you have any questions about why, feel free to leave a comment uh, and I'll be glad to answer you. So first thing I like to do is get all of my strings unwrapped and fed through the back um, to the other side and then deal with installing them on the tuners. So you just wanna be careful when you're unwinding these because they are like a coiled spring and they have a mind of their own. They can start flailing away all over the place. So just Keep a hand on the tip, especially. Careful not to let it scratch the instrument. And so we're gonna pass it through. And now you wanna get up on the other side. And you can see that, of course, going through the body, the string is going straight up and we wanna get it out through this opening to the saddle, but it's gotta go between the bolt and the tip of the saddle. And this is where having a little paintbrush or a stick of wood or your screwdriver, but again, the screwdriver, you can risk scratching something. So I like using the paintbrush and that just helps me give it a little nudge forward. And there we go. Okay, so you can see I've got all three strings fed through the back now, um, but when I turn it back over and I want to start installing my strings, there is the chance that the string might slip back through, and of course that's going to be a pain if I've turned it over and I'm trying to work on the other end of the instrument. And this is where I like to have that piece of tape. And I like to use low tack painter's tape or just detack the tape a little bit, just so I don't risk marring the finish at all. Um, and just pop it over those three holes to make sure those strings can't slip back through again. Now I wanna be careful when I turn the instrument over, I wanna kinda just 
take the strings so that they're not going to go flying around and risk again scratching anything or anyone. And we'll just turn over and I'm just going to lay the strings off to the side of the instrument like that. So with my strings fed through the bridge, uh, you can see that I've gone ahead and I like to spread the strings out on either side of the neck where they're going to mount. Um, so I've got my treble string on this side. I want to get my middle string also on this side. And then my bass string is going to go up on the right side here. Um, and at this point, you can turn your attention to the headstock and the tuning posts. So it really helps to turn the tuning posts so that the holes are facing the nut. And that's just so that when you're routing the string through the hole, you've got a nice straight path without having to do any kind of weird bending to the side or kind of kinking the string, which can weaken the metal and risk a break later down the road. So first thing I like to do is start with my middle string. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is just a practical reason, and that is if I start with my middle string, I have nice open access to this tuning post and that hole without any obstructions on the sides, right? If I start with the side strings, um, the top or bottom strings, of course, then I've got to work inside those strings and it's just a little more constricting. So um, the other reason is I like to balance the tension of the string sets um, on all my guitars. So that means that the weight, the tension of the strings is as even as I can get it uh, across the fretboard. Um, in this case, on this set, my two outer strings are nearly the exact same tension. The middle string is just a skosh higher tension string. So if I'm going to put tension on this neck for the first time, um, I'd like to start out with a little bit higher tension right down the middle to avoid uh, any kind of risk of torquing the neck a little bit to the side. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take the string and with light tension, I'm just going to draw it straight across the fingerboard directly up to the hole in the tuning post like this. But I like to have the string wrap about three or four times around the post below where it passes through the hole. Um, and that's because as I'm turning that string up to tension, those wraps are going to pull up and put pressure against the string where it passes through the hole. And that just helps to ensure the string is nice and stable in that hole. So to do that, I'm going to draw it up. Like I say, light tension, straight line up to the hole. But at this point, I'm going to just pinch the string at the nut or zero fret. If you have a zero fret, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to draw it back to the second fret. And this is gonna be the slack I need to give me those three or four wraps around the post. So with it drawn back to the second fret, now I can take the string, pinch it, and this is where I'm gonna insert it into the tuning post. Now, you can see I've got a lot of excess string here. And you can imagine trying to feed this through and wrap it around there's a lot of risk of it possibly scratching or marring the instrument. So this is where I like to take my wire cutters, or in this case, my string cutters, and I'm gonna cut off maybe just after about three inches of the string, um, just so I have enough to work with, but not so much that it's kind of flying all around and risk scratching anything. So I'm just gonna take my cutters, And off to the side, again, just to not risk anything falling and landing and scratching the instrument. Just off the side, we'll just clip that. Now at this point, it's worth saying, these strings are steel and they're very sharp. So if you have any pets or small children around the house, 
it's a really good idea not to leave these laying around for too long. So I like to go back immediately, take the string, wrap it up a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier to handle. And have a bin somewhere handy, just so that it's safely away out of reach. Okay, so of course we're gonna come back get that little bit of slack back again we'll mark where it's going to go in and now we want to pass it through right up to where you're pinching it and then stop here okay now this is another really really helpful technique at this point to keep the string from slipping back through the hole as you're trying to wind it with your other hand it really helps to take the string where it's passed through the other side of the post. We're going to bend it around the front of the headstock and back on itself this way. So for these treble side strings, you want to go in towards the middle, right? This way. And that's where you want to give it a nice sharp pull so that it's wrapping around that post really nicely. Now you want to pass under the string passing into the hole there. And here's the key part right here. You want to pull it up over and give it a nice little cinch down. And now you can see I no longer have to hold on to that string. It's not going anywhere. It's nice and securely locked into place. So with the string firmly locked into the post, now I can start winding it up to tension. And this is the reason why we're pulling the string around the front of the headstock and back towards the middle is the direction that we're turning. Um, you can see that as we're tightening the string, that lock that we've created is pulling against the string and it's ensuring that that string is not gonna be able to slip back through. Of course, if I was turning the other way, the lock would be pointless. It would just let the string go and you'd have the string slipping back through. So um, at this point, really all I need to do is just kind of keep my finger there and start turning and wrapping it around the post underneath where it's fed through the hole. And this is where it can be maybe worth the extra money to go out and get one of these nice handy little winders because this makes things go a lot quicker. So I'm just going to wind this until I've got about three or four wraps. Okay, so I haven't brought this completely up to tension, but I've got it securely wrapped around the post, so it's not going to move anywhere. And now I can go on to my other sides and feed those through. So same thing, we're gonna draw the string up, light tension up to the post, pinch it at the nut, we're gonna draw back two frets, and then I'm gonna pinch it where it goes into the post hole. And again, this is where I wanna clip off all the excess so that I've just got about two or three inches of string And again, we're going to securely dispatch this string so we don't risk any harm to anyone, man or beast. Okay. Now, of course, this time, we're on the other side of the headstock, so that tuning key is going to be turning the other direction. So again, though, we want to bring the string around the front of the headstock towards the middle, underneath where the string enters the post, and then 
cinch it over the top to lock it, okay? So I'm gonna bring it nice and tight around the post. Heavier strings are a lot easier to do than the lighter strings. There's a lot more body of the string to hang on to. Um, so nice and snug, and then I'm gonna bring it over and cinch, and that's it. It's not going anywhere. So now again, I can come in with my winder, put a little pressure on the string there, and I can start winding and wrapping that string around the post and down. Okay, so with all three strings installed on the tuning posts, um, I'm ready to go and just clip off all this excess to finish it off. So at this point, I just want to make sure I'm kind of gently tugging down the string against those wraps, come in, and I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch of uh, string there, just again, so there's no chance of it possibly down the road, flipping up and slipping back down through the winds, which would take tension off the string. So there we go. I just wanna make sure to clip it um, short enough so that there's no chance it's going to scratch the, the, the tuning post or the, the headstock and long enough so that there's no chance it's going to slip back through under the string. So just give it a nice little bend down there so that it's always pointing down and I'll do these other two. Okay and we'll come in and with this one give it a nice little tug down and finally this one okay so since this is the first time I'm putting strings on this instrument you can see I've left the strings outside the slots um, and that's so that I can take my pencil and my utility knife or again a, a razor blade is fine and I want to shave a little bit of graphite down into those slots and that makes a really good long-lasting lubricant just to make sure that those strings slip easily through the slots and don't get hung up or stuck by any friction so just take Make sure it goes down in and now I can lay my string in there and as I wind that string and it passes through it's going to coat it with graphite which is a really nice slippery long-lasting lubricant. I can always come back in and wipe that off with a little damp cloth if I don't want to have that graphite stain on there. Of course, if the instrument has already had strings on it, then you really shouldn't have to do this again, uh, unless for some reason you've cleaned it up so well that you've maybe cleaned all the graphite that somebody left behind the first time. Um, otherwise, the first time should be enough to go. So now I'm ready to uh, tighten them up to tension and tune it up, and uh, we'll take a look at how we do that in the last part. Okay, so you've got your brand new strings on and of course you're going to want to tune up and get ready to play. So I've gone ahead, got my tuner on there and I'm tuned up. In this case, I got GDG. Great, I'm ready to go. But if this isn't your first rodeo, you know that brand new strings stretch out. As soon as you put them on, they start to stretch out and loosen up. So if you start playing right away, it's going to go out of tune by the middle of your song. If you hang it up overnight, come back to it tomorrow, it's going to be completely loosened up and out of tune. So I like to go ahead and pre-stretch the strings. 
Um, and to do that, you want to be a little bit careful. So I'll bring it up to tune, G, D, G. So I've got it up to tune initially. But now I'm going to go and I'm going to fret along the fingerboard, probably from the third fret down here all the way up to the 12th fret up here. I'm going to hold the string down at the fret and I'm going to pinch the string with my finger and thumb and gently, evenly, but firmly, I'm going to stretch the string out away from the instrument. I don't want to give it a quick pull. I just want to do a nice even stretch like this. I'm going to come up, do it again. And as I do this, of course, I'm shortening the tension on the string. So I'm making sure that it loosens up evenly all along the length of the string. And now you'll notice I've taken a lot of slack out of the string and it's tuned down again, right? So now I'm going to bring it back up. In fact, it went down a whole step just from that stretching. And again, going to fret down at the third fret, pinch and gently but firmly give it a tug up, tug up, tug up. And I can even feel the string getting looser as I stretch it up at each point. I want to be careful not, like I say, not to pull it up too quickly. Um, and not to bend the string. That's why it's better to pinch than to take and get under there. And that risks putting a bend in the string. So just a nice, gentle, even tug. So again, I've gone down, but not quite as much. Let's see. Half a step, F sharp. Bring it back up to G. Do it again. Quarter step down, getting closer all the time. And this should probably be about my last time to have to do it. So just about what, three, four, maybe five times, but you can see that every time the string is getting tighter and tighter. And there we go, stayed right on G. So now we'll move on to the middle string, our D string, and same thing. Start down at the third fret, pinch, nice even tug, gently up along the length of the string. went down a eighth of a step so there that one stayed pretty pretty tight just to make sure first time you do this can feel pretty scary but after you do it a couple times you build up some courage again the key is gently evenly that stayed right on and finally, well, half step down. So there we go, we're good to go. I can go ahead and start jamming. So I hope all of these tips help you out and um, 
make you feel a little more confident and uh, comfortable with changing your strings, especially if it's the first time. And I really appreciate your watching. And uh, until next time, thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>